Um, good afternoon, everybody. Anyone from the healthcare industry? Okay, we have one, <laughs> two. Good. Well, we're going to talk. Anybody knows about GNU Health at all? <laughs> Great. So today we'll we're just going to go over a quick review of what the project is, some notable implementations, and the, the philosophy, of course, behind the GNU Health project. So about our project, it's first and foremost um, a social project. Okay, so it has technology behind it, of course, but we use technology just as a tool. We really need to provide freedom and equity in healthcare. That's, that's the goal of the new health project. So technology is very important, but it's just a tool. Okay, this is very important because most of us here uh, are either computer scientists or something related to that, you know, and uh, it's, it's very good to work with programming, but we need to have a goal at the end of the day to know what we're doing. Um, this is part of the team. Some of us are here already, and... Um, GNU Solidario is the NGO that serves as an umbrella for the GNU Health Project. Okay. For a project to be free, we need to rely on free technology. All of this technology that we have here, uh, these components are free, as in freedom, right? Uh, at the moment, of, if any of these guys would become non-free, the whole project will collapse. So it's very important that we choose the right components when we make this type of large community managed, community-based projects, right? Um, we used to have MongoDB. MongoDB is no longer there because of the issues that they had with the licensing and so on. So now we use all Postgres space, both for the transactional part and the analytic um, operations. So it's, it's, New Health is pretty much an ecosystem. It works with different components, and this is the main functionality that we have. We always said that we want people before patients, right? So we work before on the demographics, on, on, on healthy population. So we know the socioeconomic status we know uh, our health institutions, our health providers, and so on. Domiciliary units, what's the status of those houses? How many people live in those houses, and so on? Uh, do they have electricity? Do they have sewers, and so on? After we have done that, and again here we don't have any patients yet, we have people, we move to the typical electronic medical record. That's where and hospital management system. That's where, you know, you have the, the, the patients, you have the doctors, you have the interactions, you have the labs, medical evaluations, hospitalizations, and so on. Third part would be the ERP. Okay, that's that's where we take care of the health institution itself. Okay, that's where we have finances, we have stock management, we have. Um, uh, pharmacies, and so on, human resources, the limbs. And finally, we make sense of all the data that we've been collecting through this transactional part before. So, so here is where, you know, the, the Ministry of Health, the, 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 the management of the health institutions will be taking care of demographics, epidemiology, and so on. That's, those are the four main areas of new health. And different technology is going to be serving different areas of it. Within this ecosystem, we have pretty much these six areas here. New health, this is the, uh, what I just talked about, you know, the hospital management information, information system. Then we have different ways of 
packaging and providing it. For example, one of them is uh, embedded, where we use single board devices like raspies and, and so on. Um, we have the New Health Federation that I will talk today pretty much about that. This is an ongoing project for uh, a mobile device. And um, yesterday when we were having uh, some talks overnight, we were saying, hey, you know, it was good that we actually didn't do anything on, uh, you know, Google. What's that? Android, because of what we've seen, not only because of that, I already have doubts because the, 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 the operating system itself is not free. So we don't know what's really going on behind the scenes. And here we are talking about sensible data, medical data, and so on. So um, anyone, if anyone is into Plasma Mobile or whatever, please let me know because I would really get, like to get in touch with you and see how we can derive this part into Plasma Mobile. Um, laboratory Information System, these are a set of modules for that. And New Health Bioinformatics has to do with genomics and uh, genetics and, and, and bioinformatics in general. More into the research. These are just some screenshots of different modules um, from imaging to reporting to uh, histology or pathology, uh, IDs, uh, person or patient control center, and so on. So different centers, different people, different organizations will be using one or more of these modules. It's, it's modular, meaning that depending on what is the needs of my institution, I will install one, two, or whatever modules I would need for, for running it. So now let's get a little bit into the federation because uh, it's, GNU Health is very focused on public health system. Okay, we, 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 we are convinced that health is a non-negotiable human right, so we have to work in the idea of public health. Uh, that doesn't mean that if you have a private hospital, you cannot install it, of course you can, but my goal is that everybody, no matter where you are and what is your socioeconomic status, should be able to benefit from health informatics. So what, what is the idea behind the federation? Well, we have nodes, okay? Each of these icons represents a node, and a node, it's autonomous. They don't need the network to work fully functional. It's heterogeneous. They can use different technologies, but they, yet they can communicate to each other. And of course, it must be accessible and secure. Um, in order to do that, we create this sort of uh, infrastructure where we have all these nodes, those were the ones that we just saw on the previous slide. Then we have a message and an auth uh, authentication server, we call it Thalamus. And at the end of it, we have the uh, health information system. That's also a person master index. That's where, uh, you know, I can go and see what's the demographics on that person or whatever. And again, these guys can work autonomously, but if you want, you can say, I want this specific model to be part of the GNU Health Federation. And at that moment, you will start sharing information back and forth with the other uh, uh, federating, uh, federation nodes. <laughs> Difficult problems need to be solved in an easy matter if you want to scale, and if you want to have something where simplicity is the most important part of this. Because in healthcare, things tend to grow exponentially. If you have two, three, five, ten, one hundred hospitals in your region or in your country, 
you have to make sure that all that information is flowing nicely back and forth within the federation and the, the other participating nodes are not going to be generating uh, collisions and so on. So one of the things that I did was creating the concept of Book of Life. The Book of Life is made of pages of life, and each page of life has its own categories. So for example, you can create a social uh, page of life, which can also be part of the uh, social type of page. So from here you have different events like social exclusion, uh, the lifestyle, stress, whatever, you know. Uh, in, in, in the medical part, we have a type of page medical, and then you will have whether you had an encounter where you have a genetic testing or whatever, you know. So um, in this way, you have a simple system to organize all the events that went through your life. They don't need to be necessarily medical. You can have biographical type of pages where, is, where you were born, you were married or whatever. You know. And, and it, it, it will be also able to be read sequentially just as a book of life, right? So if we do that, now we have a system of health instead of a system of disease. That, that's what in the Western countries we are so used to. As a physician, I see people that come sick and should be the other way around. Or, or at least we should aim as physicians to try to see as many healthy people as possible and prevent those healthy people to be sick or to get sick. But, you know, unfortunately it doesn't work like that. The system today in the Western countries is more into the system of disease. You, know, you try to cure somebody because that person got sick. And most of the time, that person got sick because you didn't take the preventive measure to keep that person healthy. So having this, now you have multiple health professionals working in parallel, not only on the biological part, but also on the social psychological part of it. Okay. And this transdisciplinary approach to health is going to be way more richer than the one that we are used to nowadays. So how do we build those large networks? Here, for example, uh, we put a case of, of, of new health in the context of cancer research. And here we have um, one of the genes, BRCA1, and, and, and you know, in this case is responsible for, for breast and ovarian cancer and, and uh, other type of, of ailments. And, and if, if you can see in this uh, slide, you have over 40 different natural variations or variants of these specific genes. So different amino acids change the structure of the protein, making it not very functional. And in many cases, we know what is the implication of that specific natural variant, okay? The literature says, well, if you have this specific natural variant, you have these chances of, you know, um, having breast cancer somewhere along your, your life. But in many other cases, we don't know what is the clinical significance of that natural variant. And the only way today of knowing it is by having a very large N in, in statistics, right? So the more people that we have with that specific variant, we are going to be able to infer right, what would be the clinical significance of that, that until today is unknown. Okay, that is, one of, that is one of the beauties of having this federated model. So you, you aggregate a lot of data from a lot of different places, and now not only we are going to be basing ourselves on the molecular basis of health or disease. So we are not just going to have this 
amino acid change. We are going to also include family history. We are going to include lifestyle and other um, factors that are going to influence, you know, whether you are going to express at the end of the day that disease or not. So here is an example of all the things that you are going to have on one specific page of life of that person, right? Um, and, and, and this is where you get the data from on the New Health Hospital Management Information System. And you also are going to have the representation of all that data, not just from the hospital management information system. Now we are seeing a JSON-oriented representation of that. It's machine-readable, but it's also human-readable. Anybody can pretty much read what's going on here, okay, with this specific uh, person. Now, one, one of the big problems that we face today in healthcare and public administration in general the concept of silo, right? The silo is something that is pretty much closed, right? So many health institutions, they have their own databases, but they don't talk to each other. I always put the, pretty much the same example on Spain. If somebody comes to Canary Islands from Barcelona or from Madrid, I have to start all over the clinical history of that person because different autonomies don't talk to each other in the healthcare system. So this is what we have. We have hospitals, and they are close. They are silos. This guy doesn't talk to this guy. And if somebody comes to this hospital today and tomorrow goes to this hospital, he has to start all over from not only he or her, but the health professional. Um, and whoever works in the public health administration or as a, as a health professional, you know that it's very limited the time that you have per patient. So you pretty much have six, seven minutes at most. So if from those six, seven minutes, you have to spend five of them taking the clinical history, you are in trouble. So what do we propose? Well, I propose this sort of federated model where, again, each node, so this will be nodes, are independent yet they can share the information. The Free Software Foundation in Europe came with that campaign of public money, public code, that we fully endorse. And um, I mean, it's, it's, it's common sense. We cannot have a public health system with a private health system. It just doesn't work like that. If I have a computer system that is closed, cannot, by definition, be run on a public health system. It just doesn't make sense. Well, it doesn't make sense, but that is the reality today, pretty much, I would say, in 95% or 99% of the cases. Most hospitals, most health uh, systems run proprietary hardware and software, and that is not good. That is not good at all. We, we, you have to think of black boxes where you are putting your medical information and you don't know where that medical information is going, who's actually going to be benefiting from the data that is coming from you as a person or, in this case, as a patient. So it's morally wrong to use software that is not free in the public health sector for many reasons. Um, it's not just a matter of money. I mean, there are so many other things that had to do with, um, you know, your data and, and the empowerment of, of the community. So, I, hey, you know, we are in um, European elections now. We should send this slide to all our politicians and say, what, what do you think about it, you know? What would it take for you to go this way? 
Those are the things that we as a community should do. As I said before at the beginning, you know, this is not just technical. There is so many other philosophical things to put on top of the table and talk to, you know, our, our politicians and say, hey, guy, you, you cannot run private software here. It's not just because it's expensive, because it's immoral. So quickly, um, the uh, relationship with OpenSUSE and GNU Health. Uh, here we have Axel. He didn't bring the suit today. He brought the Mozilla one, which is probably more appropriate for the <laughs> for the event. Um, uh, you know, it's been years already where he's working and, and, and packaging GNU Health for for OpenSUSE. Um, and documenting it. it again, it's, it's a large project, so it's it's a lot of work behind it. So um, it's good to have somebody in different uh, GNU Linux distros that work on, on packages. Although, you know, uh, Richard Brown was talking before, uh, packaging a, a large system with multiple components as new health is not always that trivial. You know, and so we also provide the vanilla installation for whatever operating system you want to use. So if you want to use OpenSUSE, you can just run the vanilla installation and have it, uh, you know, the file system hierarchy and where the files are and, and other things that probably is harder to uh, encapsulate it in a package. Uh, we all know this one, so we can just pass it with this one or the other. Um, and also, you can always switch to have you know professional support if if you have a large institution or if you don't have the people on site that wants to uh, maintain or or, or or support the installation of new health um, you can always go for the enterprise so sell Linux other things so uh, when we were talking about the uh, a project embedded, new health embedded project. We are working today with uh, one of the, 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 the devices is Arduino, and um, OpenSUSE has been very nice to us also by uh, sponsoring, you know, the new health cone and the uh, iwi. So, is part of the reason I'm here today. So, thank you. <laughs> so we we have a hub. This, this is pretty much a, a, a demo server where people just can log in no matter where you are in the world and play around with your instance and your nodes and see if, if it's actually shaping up the way that, that you need or you need to do more customizations or whatever. This is in, um, here in Germany uh, set up and it runs uh, also OpenSUSE uh, lib. And finally, let me just go through some projects um, around the, the, the globe. Um, so, so we go from very small, I say very small, but we go from small clinics. This is in the rainforest in Cameroon, um, where you know they have all these really cool solar panels and uh, the, the installation running there. Um, to very large uh, implementations. Uh, All India Institute of Medical Science is the largest hospital in Asia. It's, it's huge. Um, so it, it doesn't really make much of a difference. <coughs> of course, in the implementation it does, but the functionality of a health institution is pretty much the same. You, know, you have stock management, you have people, you have human resources, you have pharmacies, you have limbs. Then you can have many more tests on AIMS that in uh, Big Up that we were seeing before um, on this one. But at the end, again, you know, you have people, you have health professionals, you have labs, and uh, you try to do the best for your community. Um, working with WHO. World Health Organization, this is for Bafia District Hospital. Um, again, using some of the standards that WHO has already. 
uh, and it makes it much easier to be able to create this uh, one world, one health thing where you have your, your clinical history here in Germany and you want to take it to Spain, a health professional there should be able to read it because it's based on standards, on medical standards and medical coding. And we work with them. In this case, this is for a universal health campaign and, and another uh, district hospital in, in Cameroon. Uh, Jamaica uh, Ministry of Health, this was one of the very earliest uh, adopters since 2013, I believe. So it's been over six years that they've been using it uh, at, nation, at nationwide level. Um, the Red Cross, specifically in, in Mexico. Laos Ministry of Health. The New Health Alliance of Academic and Research Institutions. This is one of the things that I invite anybody that has or works in a university or research institution to join us. We just signed up with the uh, uh, National University of Entre Rios in, in, in Argentina, a five-year uh, memorandum to work along them in the implementation of New Health in, in different countries. And, and, and of course, it's linked to the academia. Different um, academic centers have been working with us in different areas of the world. And um, I, I, I feel after these 10 years, that is probably the most rewarding thing because you get people that is um, very uh, high qualified, um, that knows the latest on different areas, whether it's social medicine or whether it's bioinformatics, and they join us in different master programs or whatever, and of course the community of New Health benefits from that. And that is pretty much it. We're doing very well. Um, Richard Stallman always says happy hacking when he finishes his talks or his mails, and uh, I just added the healthy hacking there. I think that what is important here is to have this little sentence there that we tend to forget that you know health is a human right, and uh, it should be free, and it should be universal, and of course, it should never be negotiable. Anybody that needs health, no matter whether you're very rich or very poor, you should be able to get the best a health practitioner possible. And uh, this was the very first project that we did in 2006 in, in Argentina. So these are now grown up ladies and gentlemen there. And uh, it was what actually motivated me to move from you know, doing GNU Linux uh, installations on, on, on public schools to actually tackle the socioeconomic determinants of health of many of these kids to be able to raise in health and in dignity because that's of course what they all deserve so uh, thank you i hope you like it thank you now we have uh, enough time to any questions that you may have uh, about the project, or uh, if you want to join us, of course, if you want to donate a lot of money, that would be even better. Uh, we are all open <laughs> for that. So uh, any questions that you may have on the project? Yes. Do you have uh, information how many It's very hard because free software projects, unless you put a counter somewhere, you know, um, sometimes you know about projects when they have a problem. So they go to the mailing list and say, hey, you know, we have this problem. Uh, now we are, we are documenting in a WHO page is called the Health Atlas, if I'm not mistaken where we are putting 
all the known projects that we know. Um, but you know, we have pretty much in all continents. Uh, we have in India, we have in Pakistan, uh, we have in Argentina. Most of them are southern hemisphere. You know, if, if you look at the map, most of them are. Uh, but we also have in in, in Japan. Uh, uh, we have in Jamaica, we have in Mexico, uh, and then again, you know, sometimes you see somebody from Peru saying, hey, I have this issue, and then, hey, good, uh, can you please tell us where you actually install it, and it's up to them, of course, I mean, it's nothing that we track or anything like that. Um, the project is hosted at the GNU uh, site. So you can just go to health.genu.org and download it from there. And we do not have any tracking thing, so it's just download it. It, it would be very nice uh, to have, hopefully, this map that it's part of the WHO will help us also and will help the people that is actually implementing it in these places to just join it and, and register themselves there. So you have an idea who's actually doing what, in, because we need to make the project sustainable. Um, and this is probably the hardest part, because you can go today to Cameroon, for example, and do the implementation. But if you leave and you don't have capacity building there, the project is not going to uh, maintain itself, because you need people that knows about computers, that knows about uh, health informatics in general to be able. This, these are large projects. You know, this is not like uh, you know a, a text document thing. It, it, you need to build capacity there, and that's probably the hardest part. So if we have that map that we were talking, then you would know who actually did implementation where, and the local people can actually reach those people. So that's that's where we're moving. Yes. So how long does it enable the channel to different all these types of files take switch from the existing system that they need or whatever I have to do how and how much probably is the data because you have your old data you have to spend all the Well, it, it really depends on the source, pretty much. So if, if the, the existing system allows you to interface via web service or via, you know, if they can actually put that in XML or JSON format or, or, or even interface between a web service, um, you can get the demographic data or you can get the clinical history. And then it comes to, okay, where or how much data do I want to import? Because many times what happens is you are getting things that are not outdated or whatever, you know. So it depends. I would say that in general, before doing the uh, the uh, migration from one system to another, is what do you actually want to implement? I mean, uh, it's, if you are going to have financial management, if you are going to have pharmacies, if you are going to have limbs, it's going to take more time because you need different departments to work on all these areas and customize it also to your. So every single country needs to have specific reports that you hand to the Ministry of Health in a specific format and so on. Um, and also depends on who do you actually have on site in the knowledge of those guys. Because if you have people, like in Argentina, the, this, these guys are 100% independent. They, they are doing their own implementations. They've been doing it for years now. And you, you won't pretty much see any messages from them on the mailing list because they are doing it themselves. Uh, now we have cases uh, in, in, in Iraq, for example, and, uh, and in India. Uh, where they are just starting, and it takes much more than just computer scientists. This, you know, you need somebody that knows about financial accounting to do all the charts of accounts and all this stuff. 
You need people to know about stock management if you are going to put a pharmacy in place. Um, but it's, again, you know, it's, if you have a good design of your implementation, if you have a good blue book, you know, where all steps, all the resources that are going to be involved in that implementation are there beforehand, you are going to be doing very well. Most of the mistakes in new health implementations come because people don't do it. People just install the system and think that, you know, that's going to pretty much do it by itself. And, hey, that's, you know, pretty much everybody does that. Until they say, hey, no, let's stop, let's go back, let's document all the, when you, you have a, sort of a blueprint with all the steps, with deadlines, with meetings, and with the resources, and, and everything that takes to make a, a project like this. If you have that, um, I've seen people going live with three, four months of, of implementation. Yeah. And that, uh, if you are just a limbs, if you are just a lab, is much shorter most of the time because the only thing that you need is to have the interfaces with the apparatus to bring back, you know, the results, and that's usually shorter. But if you want to have a full-blown uh, hospital management information system, that takes time. A lot of to do with security, with roles, who can do what within the system. It's a role-based uh, authorization uh, system so so there are always two ways one way is doing it wrong and fast and the other one is doing it slow and well and and of course the second one is the way to go once you have it then you can scale well you know uh, but it will be a very big mistake to just jump in without really actually knowing the system yes Uh, probably Axel knows more than that. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean we have uh, at least two installations. One. Axel, come here. German legislation is. Yeah. We have at least uh, two installations in Germany from which we know. And uh, the one is a health practitioner who's uh, billing privately, so he has no interface with the. Uh, Krankenkassen with the legal ones, uh, and the other one is um, a daycare station for homeless refugees and people without uh, health insurance. So, uh, if we want to do billing or something like that with the uh, uh, public health system in Germany, we need to have a certified interface, which we clearly don't have at the moment. Um, we can build it, of course, but it needs some kind of funding or uh, whatever. Um, our plan was to do this together with academia, and we're in touch with, for example, the Apollon um, uh, University of Applied Science in Bremen, but it's uh, a lengthy process, let's say it that way. <laughs> So if you have uh, knowledge in that area, if you have people who are willing to spend some money in there, uh, feel free to contact us. To give you another example, um, we have a very active um, uh, community member in, uh, in Austria, and the, uh, uh, the Practitioner Society of Vienna is currently evaluating uh, the usage of a free software system for their practice in the general Vienna area and they need also a couple of um, data exchange sets for example which are standardized and these are currently already being built because there we have really people who say yes we want this and we want to go for a free solution and they taking some money into their hand uh, to realize this and as Luis mentioned this is a free system so uh, you have the freedom to develop this further and to add uh, modules to fulfill the legal uh, requirements for it. Does that answer your question? Thank you.
Thank you, Axel. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, one is Laos. Um, uh, they implemented in the largest hospital, uh, Mahosot Hospital, um, and the other one is, uh, and also on the Center of Medical Rehab, uh, and the other one is uh, Jamaica. Uh, you know, the Ministry of both both of them are the Ministry of Health who are actually doing nationwide. Yeah, um, and they hire in in the case of. of of Jamaica, they hire local people to actually be part of the Ministry of Health and doing it. And uh, hey, you know, this is this is very uh, has a lot of merit because these guys, you know, you know, we know how governments go. You know, today you have one government, and tomorrow you have another government, and the government that comes tomorrow say, I don't like this, and he takes it out. So, it's been there for six years. <laughs> it's it's a complete success. You know, so. Um, it's, it's 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 not easy. It's it's not easy at all because it takes a lot of philosophy behind. It's not just you know a, a technical implementation. On the contrary, yes. Again, you know, I think that new health is very solid in terms of technology, but I think that it's even more solid in terms of philosophy, and that's what moves us. And then you know, public health should be public and universal, and, and that's why we are doing it. Then we can apply whatever state-of-the-art technology, whether it is, uh, again, you know, demographics, epidemiology, bioinformatics, that's there. We can, we can do it, you know, in terms of uh, technology. What is more difficult is actually convince the people, convince the authorities to actually use free software in, in public health care. And that's up to us. But when I say up to us, it's up to all of us to to ask. So when I'm going to vote somebody, I'm going to say, do you have free software in your program? And if they say no, well, you know, that's an easy way to keep going. You know, uh, and then we should all do the same because it's it's, it's morally right to do so. So thank you. Any other question? Any other beer? Yeah, <laughs> that looks, looks better. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>